Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 4 vs 4 on Omaha and today I'm going to be playing with the 12th SS Panzer. On my team was Ciara, Balak and Panzers who were playing the 9th Panzer, 2nd Panzer and the 116th Panzer. And on the Allied side we have Bumblebee, Daniel, Minotha and the Knife Guy who were playing with the 3rd Canadian Infantry, Guards Armoured, 1st SSB and the 3rd Armoured. Now this was a Patreon game played on my stream so a huge thank you to all of the players here and all of my other patrons who uh, support the channel. I really, really appreciate it. It helps so damn much, you cannot believe. But either way, today we're gonna to be talking about the strengths and weaknesses of the 12th SS and uh, showing off a really, really fun gameplay with them. So with the 12th SS, a lot of people associate the 12th SS with the Boy to Firefly and the Boy to Cromwell, which is probably the right thing to do. Uh, because those two units are your power points in phase A for the most part. I have seen players use the 12th SS without those units previously, but not to continued success. So I think that utilizing the Boy to Firefly and Boy to Cromwell on certain maps uh, can really be very effective, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So at the start of this game, I am going to be having the Boy to Firefly. I felt that the Boy to Firefly on this right hand side near the beach uh, would be very, very good for the 1200 meter range and also to control this road just on the left side of the beach because you can get into positions where you can utilize the maximum range. Furthermore, from this right side, you also have shots across towards this road so the Firefly works really, really well when it can cover basically all of its bases. The other place that I would say the Boy to Firefly is really, really strong is in Phase A on Pegasus Bridge. There's that large gap in the middle of the towns that you can definitely exploit with the Firefly and the Boy to Cromwell if you uh, play it well, because of course you can always get ambushed by AT guns. Let's have a look at what else I'm bringing in. So on the right side, I've got the SBW-222, which has the 20mm auto cannon and our recon. There's going to be some Panzer Grenadiers there. We've got some command to follow up the Boyd's Firefly. I've also got the 257 to provide smoke and take out enemy AT guns that may be a threat, because that is the main thing that would kill your Boyd's Firefly early on, because the Boyd's Firefly can't deal with those AT guns. It doesn't have any HE on its main gun, so you can't engage them at the 1200 meter range like you could with allied Fireflies and its machine gun only has 600 meter range, so you're not going to be touching them anytime soon. On the left side I have a couple units of Panzergrenz with a unit of Recon, and then on the left of me is Ciara with the push from the 9th Panzer, including plenty of looks. Either way, we are off, and as you can see, I'm basically just using my Panzer Grenadiers to hold the front line on the left side, whilst the majority of my forces are on the right. Uh, the idea being that my recon will spot for my Firefly, and I can shoot all the way up this road against my opponent. Let's go ahead and set it to my point of view, and we will carry on. So, what's the weakness of the 12th SS? They have a couple of really strong units, yes. But the one thing that really lets them down in phase A is their income. They only have 70 points per minute. That's two Panzergrenadiers every minute. Which, if you compare to a division like the SSB, they get 100 points per minute. And they can bring in, say, five units of infantry with that amount of income in one go. So that is a major disparity um, that can affect the early game of the 12th SS in certain situations. On more open maps where the Boy to Firefly and Cromwell really shine, that's where you need to basically make the Boy to Firefly and Cromwell get their value for money, because if you do not, then you're in trouble. So I've got the Aufklader on the right side, I've got the Spear Troop in the mid. And the reason I've got the Spear Troop here and the Aufklader on the right is because the Spear Troop work well in the tree lines and the Alfreda work well in these smaller bushes because they have the very high stealth that means even if they're in just a normal bush, they are still hard to see and therefore can remain alive for a very long time and help you spot all of the units you need to take out. 
Yeah, just my Panzer Grenadiers on the left side, just going to be putting this one on return fire. That's basically there to stop any vehicles from rushing down the main road. It can hit them with the Panzerfaust. If there's any infantry that tries to approach, it can melt them with the MG42s. So the Panzer Grenadier is in a decent position, but giving away their position and the fact that there isn't much to support them would be a bad idea. So keeping them on return fire works because of that. And one thing I do want to do here is make sure that I kill off Daniel's recon. We are going to be up against Daniel for the most part on this right side. So I'm going to be getting my mortar to target that recon almost immediately. Um, killing off the recon is so damn important because you don't want obviously the enemy to see your positions or at least you want to make them have a harder time seeing your positions. So focusing recon is never a bad idea. Blinding your enemy is always good. Anyway, my Firefly is currently sitting in this bush looking down the road. Uh, ideally it would be facing uh, down the road but just currently being a sentinel watching for if anything approaches. Meanwhile over on the left side we are losing a bit of ground because of this salient but Balak's uh, going to be contesting this town. So it's a little bit of a slow start. But on the left side, Ciara is making a little bit of ground. Uh, pushing through some of the infantry there. Those looks actually work really well at close range. It's a shame that you can't get the looks in more uh, German divisions. I do find it quite amusing actually that the 12th SS does rely on two allied pieces of armor to really make most of its ground early on. And the reason I'm waiting here is mainly for my opponent to make a mistake so that I can take advantage of it. So Panzergrands, they get the better of the M5 half track. That's going to reveal a Humber Mark III on the, on the uh, beach here. Actually, I think that's a Humber Mark IV. Yeah, it's a Humber Mark IV because it has the main gun on it, the uh, 7 AP gun. So I don't really want to have that engage my 222 since it will likely kill it. So I'm keeping the 222 hidden for the time being. Meanwhile, my Firefly is taking shots at the Jeep here. So it's off to a slow start, that's for sure. But Firefly is now going to be moving to the right side. And we're going to be starting to engage uh, the Humber Mark IV. This is where the Boyd's Firefly really comes in handy. Like this Humber Mark IV could fire back but it's just completely outclassed. And the six base accuracy of the Firefly will eventually allow me to hit. Unfortunately, I drove away from the um, Panzergrands here and thus I do not have the extra veterancy I need to get the job done. I'm deciding to move the Boy to Firefly back since I don't want to get caught up by an AT gun from the left. So I'm going to leave an AT gun on the right to cover the beach with the 222. And the boy to Firefly's job is done for the time being. Now it's time to bring in the 259 and the Cromwell. Just kind of holding my ground until I get those power pieces in and I can make a really good play. That's kind of what I've been doing. Just taking it easy, waiting for my more powerful units to get in, like the boy to Cromwell and these 259s. And then I can sort of work with those all together in order to make a push. Also, since I've been very passive, my opponent has now decided to press forwards and that's allowing my boy to Firefly to get a very nice engagement against the Cromwell 7 here. I have the intention of uh, taking that out. It's currently falling back. My Firefly's actually missed every single shot so far, but that's showing side armor. And that's going to be a crew wound. Firefly will hopefully get the job done. 257, going to be helping mortar these rifles. Hoping that I could surrender the rifles, but I actually end up helping Daniel surrender my Panzergrand, so that wasn't good. But the Firefly has taken out the Cromwell 7, so I have a rather large armor advantage on this right side, just from that kill alone. Because the Cromwell 7 is the best unit that the Guards Armored can bring in in Phase A. And my Vita Firefly does come under attack briefly from the 6-pounder. But the smoke that came in here from Daniel that was to try and cover his Cromwell 7, I believe, actually ended up covering my boy to Firefly. Going to lose another unit of Panzergrenz to the Jeep that's pressing forwards. I think Daniel did a really good job of surrendering a, a couple of my Panzergrenz when they were on really high health. But uh, on this B 
beach side, we've got the Pack 38 taking out the Humber Mark IV, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Two Star AT gun, I moved the Panzergrenz over to make that the case. And another thing that's really actually quite decent about the Twelfth SS in Phase A is their Pack 38s can be made two star, which uh, allows them to really hit the mark. Panzergrenz run into the rifles and the 222. You can see they get chunked very quickly and then surrender. 259s now not having to worry too much about the use of the Cromwell 7 can get very aggressive here. Also, well, the six pounder it shows itself by firing at the Firefly instead of one of these 259s and thus uh, suffers a painful 20 mil death as my 259s run all over uh, that area of the map now. And with that six pounder now dead, I can move forwards and clean up these half tracks. I can pin down any infantry that's trying to cross, out, uh, cross across the open. So I'm in a really nice position. Like I've lost a couple of pounds of grenadiers, yeah. But uh, in return, I've sort of taken out the Humber Mark IV and also the Cromwell 7. So I'm not actually in a bad position overall. Another Humber Mark IV going to be used, engaging my 259. Going to have to make sure that I don't allow that to continue. Panzergrenz here are going to have to fall back in the face of the Willys MMG that's going to try and run them down, but Pack 38's moving into position to try and take care of that. I've also got the Boys of Cromwell that's going to move in that uh, direction to get the shots as well. So there we go. Willys MMG dead. Nice try to surrender another unit of my Panzer Grenadiers, but uh, didn't quite pay off. Now I've just brought in a unit of Panzer Grenadiers here in the half track. The half track unfortunately is going to die to the Humber Mark IV, uh, leaving my Panzer Grenadiers pinned, but I mean there's no buts really, that was just bad. I should have unloaded before I sort of moved into the open. 259 gets taken out by the AT gun on the main road, I'm gonna have a target for my 257 again. But uh, just a couple things to note about the 12th SS in general is the 257 mortar carrier needs to be managed really, really well. Um, you've got to save those mortar shells for when you see enemy AT. Now, do not ask me why the shells are going this far to the left, but um, I was trying to hit that six pounder with the 257 and, and clean it up. That's why I'm also moving up the aft ladder with the Boys of Cromwell because I was kind of relying on the six pounder being pinned, but my mortar was just complete fail. So the Cromwell's going to hit the mark, and I was very lucky there not to lose the Cromwell at that range. So I'm going to back off from the new six-pounder that has arrived. I was killing off the first. Uh, yeah, I did get pretty lucky with that engagement. The Boyd, fire, uh, Boyd Cromwell could have very well gone down, but I'm uh, going to take it as it is, and I was quite happy with my current position. So, another point to make about the 12th SS is their infantry availability is not the best. They do get a lot of Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers are great because they have the machine guns and they also have the Panzer Fowls to kill any vehicles that get too close. But they are expensive and in Phase A if you rely on the Panzer Grenadiers in half tracks too much you'll find you won't have enough infantry on the field. So always make sure you have like a card of the Panzer Grenadiers that don't come in half drags. That's vitally important in my opinion. Anyway, my Boyd to Cromwell is going to be engaging the six pounder. I'm quite happy to allow the Boyd to Cromwell to take that first shot because the six pounder, although it can have line of sight, even though it looked like it couldn't, um, it's very unlikely to hit the first shot when it's a unvetted six pounder. So that's what I'm trying to take advantage of, and considering I've pinned down the six pounder, I can now continue the engagement regardless. So I was just reversing enough that I could make sure I get those shots off whilst resetting the six pounder's um, sort of a accuracy modifier. Because if you let a unit continue to fire over and over, it becomes more and more accurate um, if it's still shooting at the same target from the same spot. So that's something I was trying to avoid by making the six pounder move. Um, rifles here, they're going to get pinned down. Um, we're going to take those out as my Panzer Grenadiers continue to advance. So I'm starting to make ground across the open here now, even though the six pounder has taken out another unit of my half track. And uh, on this right side, my 222 is under threat, but uh, just trying to dodge the, the Stuart and the six pounder currently. Spitfire Mark 9 coming in with a bombing strike onto the Boy to Firefly. It's just going to be a little bit too late as I snipe that Stuart 6, saving my 222, which is 
taking me a lot of ground on the beach here. Meanwhile, my boy of Cromwell is going to completely whiff a shot onto the six pounder, but only a matter of time until that is pinned down, thanks to my Panzergrenz and the Spear Troop. So the Panzergrenz going to be taking out that half track, of course. We're in range to do so. Now I've just got to clean up the six pounder if I can. Take out the motorized rifle leader there, thanks to the machine guns as well. And we're starting to make some serious ground. Now this is the one thing that I really love about the 12th SS. If you are conservative enough towards the beginning of the game and you start to bring in these units that are really, really strong and use them well, um, you can get like a really strong push going. So that's what we're currently seeing so at the moment. Now eventually my Aufklärer, they're going to get caught out in the open, they're going to go down. But my boy to Firefly is still able to come around the corner and shoot at the Sherman 5 for the time being. I've also still got the Spear Throop in the mid and if they breach this tree line then I should be able to uh, see beyond that as much as I like except from maybe up this road the other great thing about uh, the 12th SS is you do of course get Whitman now Whitman is a huge target um, for enemy players and honestly it's probably the worst part about bringing him in otherwise he can be very very strong because it's a three-star Tiger in phase B it has that 1200 meter range and can use it very effectively but Daniel here has now invested into a 17-pounder. The reason you can tell that's a 17-pounder as opposed to a 6-pounder is due to the 6 health rather than the 5 health. Um, so that is something definitely to keep an eye on. Um, other things like uh, M5 guns, you know, they have the 6 health instead of 5 health, I think. But uh, either way, Firefly on the right side, going to be able to get the weapon jam onto the Sherman 5, disabling that for the time being. And another shot gets the job done. Staying nearby this command is very, very important with the Firefly. But uh, Daniel here with this Recce is actually going to run away from the pack 38. In my opinion, I thought it would have been a better idea for the Recce to try and kill the pack 38 since it does have the 6 HE and the range that was close enough to do a lot of damage there. But I managed to get away with the pack 38 and keeping that alive on the right side for so long was an incredible nuisance for Daniel who kept trying to uh, push units up this beach. Like it just allowed me to roll it to the side and, and get the shots where I needed them. Also now I have the uh, tiger to assist the firefly. I can use the firefly a little bit more liberally than I otherwise would. So the 222 engaged by multiple half tracks here will get pinned down quite quickly due to its two armor but can of course reply with quite a lot of damage from the 20 more auto cannon so that's what I was attempting to do there whilst avoiding it getting pinned down like I did give it a reverse order before I thought it would be pinned just to make sure that it preferably wasn't I've also brought in a Panzer 4H on the left side, that's to assist these Panzer Grenadiers in making a move, and these Panzer Grenadiers have breached this tree line, so I'm able to now uh, move up my Spear Throop. I'm not sure if I do straight away, I think I probably forgot, but um, having the Spear Throop in this tree line at this point would be really, really nice. Now since the Spitfire Mark 9 is going to be coming in with the uh, bombing strikes, I'm going to be utilizing an ME109 G6R6. Uh, to take out that Spitfire. Um, it did end up killing off my 259, but fortunately the 259 stayed, or the 257, sorry, stayed alive. I did want to continue the pursuit onto the Spitfire Mark 9, but I wasn't able to due to the second Spitfire hanging about. But now I have two ME109 G6R6s, and that is a very dead Spitfire. Now, controlling the skies as the 12th SS is something that is relatively important because you want to make sure that uh, you aren't harassed too much um, around your Firefly and, for example, Whitman at this point. Because if either of them gets pinned, they can be taken advantage of by much lighter armor on the side of the Allies, which they have an abundance of. And that's not something that you want to happen. That's how people who are using Panthers lose to Shermans. It's allowing the Panther to be pinned down in a bad situation and thus allowing it to be taken advantage of whilst it's pinned. Now the ME109 G6R6s, they're going to be strafing the 17-pounder. Then I'm going to evac them because they were getting low on ammunition. 
And Whitman's going to come in and finish it off. So nicely done. And uh, meanwhile, 2-2-2, two, 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 engaging the Stuart 6, not really ideal. But uh, the Firefly is on station to try and help out. And I've also brought in a Panzerwerfer in the meantime to try and get rid of the or like any AT or infantry that would have been behind this tree line. Another Stuart's going to come down the road, gets annihilated. And it just seemed as though Daniel was trying to get these Stuarts into positions where he could take on my units at close range. But due to me having a lot of sort of tanks on the field at this moment, it's very difficult for him to get into positions where I do not have line of sight. Because I've got the Firefly on the right side. He's managed to smoke off the off Whitman, but you know the Firefly is still covering this road. And then I've got the Panzer IV on the left side that's uh, putting a lot of pressure onto his artillery. So, yeah, I'm just going to continue pressing forwards here, having taken out a lot of expensive units. The Stuart 6s, both dead. Now my 222 is going to continue helping out against the assault pioneers that Daniel is trying to rely on here. But at this sort of engagement range, the Panzergrens get the better of the assault pioneers. The best thing to do with the assault pioneers in this situation is either have them on return fire or make sure their Liam field is turned off so they don't engage the Panzer Grenadiers at that longer range because it basically means that the uh, Panzer Grenadiers can engage them um, otherwise they would remain hidden until the 100 meter range where the assault pioneers would throw their grenade and the Panzer Grenadiers get killed so it's very important that you micro when you're using units like assault pioneers because otherwise they are extremely vulnerable now the Reki does eventually actually get the better of my uh, Pack 38 which is quite ironic Considering earlier in the game I was thinking that the Reki should kill the Pack 38 But having stayed there for a very long period of time, and I think they're going to continue to stay there for, for the time being. Um, they did manage to get the kill in the end. So Whitman going to be engaging on the main road here. The Humber Mark 4 is there. There is now a Firefly that I've got to, got to worry about. Just came off the main road before it got revealed to my Firefly. My Firefly getting bombed by the uh, Spitfire Mark 9, killed off the Panzergrant on the right side. But I did manage to get my 222 back to the supply, which allows me to get some more ammunition for the 20mm auto cannon. On the left side, I'm going to get uh, attacked here as well. That's another bombing strike, forces back my Panzer 4. Thankfully, I just have plenty of units to make sure that these bombing strikes for the time being are inconsequential. Now over on the left side of the map currently but, uh, Panzers and Balak is having a hard time trying to hold this um, side against the knife guy. He's putting on a lot of pressure. So eventually I'm going to be helping out on the left side since it's much better to help your team on a side that's closer to your spawn than it is on a side which is further away from your spawn. So my Firefly here, it is in trouble. Um, thankfully I do have the front line covering those Assault Pioneers so they're not going to be surrendering my Boyd's Firefly anytime soon but that's going to be an internal fragment that I'm going to have to get some more ammunition for. Boyd's Cromwell comes into line of sight of Harris uh, but Harris is going to get hit by Whitman which is going to cause a transmission damage. Whitman gets the better of Harris. Harris goes down. Not very effective at all. But cleaning up that Firefly was such a relief at this point because it could have been the unit at that range that could have killed off um, my units. Fortunately for me, Whitman was already facing the right direction to take out the Firefly. And the Humber Mark IV, well, that's going to suicide into my units as well. So here comes the Panzerwerfer. It's going to be firing briefly at the town but then I realized since the front lines moved past the town that it's unlikely there's anything there so I'm just going to be moving my Panzer Grenadiers up instead of setting all of those buildings alight. Meanwhile I've got my two ME109s flying about just so that I have them on standby for if any of those bombers turn up since I am now starting to get more aggressive with Whitman and my Panzer IVs. On this left side just advancing with a couple of Panzer Grens, um, since uh, this is the flank of Manotha and it's unlikely that he's going to be paying too much attention to this area and any sort of units that are here are unlikely to be supported well. 
Whitman on the main road. Uh, going to be able to shoot down there with the help of the Voyager Cromwell and these Tigers, they can be absolutely fantastic because they do have 5 HE on their main gun, which is actually pretty damn decent. But off we can continue. Just trying to take as much ground as I can. Get all of my units into the right positions. You can see I brought in a couple of Flak 36s as well to secure the air engagement with my ME109s. Got the 257 well up here with the rest of my units to provide the mortar fire. But there is a lot of units now coming in. Daniel's being supported by a lot of infantry from Minutha. And he has bought himself a Sherman 5. Hands 4. Going to be engaging the Sherman 5 now. Meanwhile, uh, Whitman's going to get shot at by this AT gun that was unloaded. And that's going to be an ammo storage hit. Now this is a 17 pounder. It does get pinned down. I do manage to take it out very quickly thanks to the mortar and also my Panzer IV firing from the left side. But Whitman did get, take the ammo storage hit and lost a lot of ammunition because of that. In one on the left side, Panzergrand's made a lot of ground by taking out a unit of infantry. So I'm still taking quite a bit of ground. Um, it's just unfortunate that we've uh, lost so much ground on the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest into two units of Panzergrands with their half tracks and a Panther G for this left side and uh, assist Balak and Panzers in pushing back. I also end up investing into a Mobilwagen um, to make sure that that Panther is not bombed because as I mentioned earlier it's very important that you do not allow your expensive units to get isolated by letting them be pinned down by bombing strikes or artillery and so on. So you've got to have counters to those and if I can get a mobile Wagen in there um, it's a good idea. So the Panzer IV on the far left side uh, that did get taken care of uh, by a bombing strikes forced it all the way back. Panzergrens are still trying to make uh, moves forwards but of course are slowly but surely taking damage. The thing is about Panzergrens is you do want to be pretty careful with your sort of infantry preservation. It's very important that you utilize that to the maximum effect. But Panther G, decent aim time. Going to be able to take out the M4A1 at close range. Going to be trying to take out the other M4A1 as well. Whilst not getting too distracted by these half tracks because those half tracks can cause the Panther to show front armor towards them allowing the M4 to get the better of me but uh, I was quite sort of reliant on this Panther G just getting the job done here um, there is an M4 I think behind these trees but that's going to take out the M21 mortar carrier nice unit to take out there's a CGMC here that I'm also looking for meanwhile on the right side I think Whitman got the better of the Sherman 5 so just across the board doing work. Panther G actually manages to bounce a shot from the M4A1 at close range. It's going to come around the corner again and go for another cheeky engagement. Just look at that aim time. Panther G just can't match it. So what I'm going to do is cheat. I'm going to rely on the help from the Panzer IV of Balak and also the Panzer Grenadiers coming through this tree line if that didn't work out. So the Panzer IV gets the job done for me thanks to Balak and my Panther in the meantime took out the M15. So, double Milvavagen, now here to stop the Panther G from being pinned by bombing strikes. And I've got uh, an extra unit of Panzer Grenadiers that's going to be helping uh, Balak push back the town. And meanwhile, um, we have uh, Panzer Grenadiers engaging the motorized rifles on the right side. Uh, but I've just taken a more, much more defensive stance here now, keeping my Panzer IVs in cover, uh, keeping Whitman uh, covering the main road. And uh, my boy to Firefly is currently just chilling back here, getting some ammunition. It should probably have moved back by now, but that's just my bad. Panzerwerfer is looking to take out the six-pounder on the main road. So I'm going to be allowing a full volley to occur. Unfortunately, completely misses the mark. But uh, Tiger, the Tiger here should be able to uh, finish that off. The job well done. Now I've just got to be careful of that 17 pounder up on the cliff face. Meanwhile on the left side waiting for my Panzergrenz to make some ground before I continue the advance with the Panthers because the Panthers 
Um, you don't really want to just move them forwards blindly, of course. I could have brought in some recon, but the Panzergrens are really decent against the majority of these vehicles here. And currently we do have a decent amount of information about the units on this left side. Like there's the Jumbo, there's the M4A375. So my Panther should be able to take advantage of those units. Meanwhile, on this left side, Sherman 2 does come in from Minotha. And Minotha manages to kill off this Panzer 4H. Also puts this one on an internal fire. Now considering there's still a Sherman 2 DD from the first SSB at this point in the match is quite something, but um, either way, just looking for a way to get rid of that and my boy's Firefly is going to start to move into position now. Meanwhile on the left side, Mobile Vargan's helping pin the infantry in the tree line to allow my Panzergrenz to continue forwards. This Panzer 4 is going to be taken out, I believe, by all of these tanks. Um, that were waiting around the corner. It's an M4A376, M4A375 that I already mentioned. There's a Jumbo here and there's another M4A375 on the way. Uh, Bumblebee and the Knife Guy uh, working together here to make a little bit more ground. Saying that, I think Bumblebee just supplying the AA, not much else. So it's mainly the Knife Guy and his 150 point income in Phase C. Now if you actually look across the board, um, the Allies have way more income than us in the late game. So we don't really have the resources to make a Phase C comeback for the most part. Like we do have superior units in the form of the uh, like Panthers and so on. But other than that, we are kind of in trouble. The 257, it does get taken out there. It actually ends up working as bait for the Firefly to uh, get the kill. Uh, this Panzer IV manages to stay in that ambush position, gets a shot onto the Sherman II. I managed to kill that off as well. Clean up a couple of tanks on that right hand side, so nicely done. Panther G also manages to get the better of the M4A376 here. So that was a decent kill and my Panzergrenz briefly run into the tree line there to get the shot onto the half track, which basically stops uh, the knife guy from moving his units close to this tree line without any infantry. And that was the, the whole idea, because it allows me to take a wide berth with the Panther G and look for the engagement with the Jumbo and the other M4s. Meanwhile, on the right side, more Panzer Grenadiers have been brought in. I did keep uh, my Panzer Grenadiers alive for a very long time, but really nice hits here from the Panzerwerfer are going to smash into the position of the 17 pounder where it previously was. Unfortunately for me it had moved further to the right but I take out that half track nonetheless. Now what ended up happening here on this right side is uh, Daniel managed to get in a couple of fireflies. One's going to be taken on Whitman with the help of the Wolverine so I do get a shooter knock. Uh, my firefly is currently coming under a lot of fire the bombing strike does come in I'm going to have to fall back, that back as well. Bumblebee trying to give a little bit of a hand over here whilst I'm trying to gain back some ground on the left side. Panther G going to be taking the shots at the Jumbo. Panzergrenz are in a little bit of trouble, but uh, if the LMG rifles come through the tree lines, then the Mobilewagen should be able to get the job done. P-38 Lightning does come in with the bombing strike. That's going to force my Panther G back, and this is what I was trying to avoid, having my Mobilewagens this far back was like a really big mistake. But thankfully for me, um, Balak does have this Panther A in this position and my Panzer Grenadiers are going to be able to get the Panzer Faust onto the M4. Also, this was a really, really important strafing run that allowed my Panzer Grenadiers to get the better of the armored LMG rifles. It stops the Jumbo basically from fast moving down this road and uh, killing my Panther, which is uh, otherwise um, sort of safe behind this tree line for the time being. I'm also going to invest in two Focke Wolf 190s and they're going to come in with the bombs to uh, prevent that jumbo from making any more ground. Uh, meanwhile, on the left side, still kind of microing this uh, engagement uh, with the Panzer IV, uh, just trying to get that into a position that can ambush the Firefly. Uh, meanwhile, getting Whitman back and uh, also have uh, the Firefly getting back to a safer position since my infantry is under a lot of pressure. The main point is... Uh, just trying to push back on this left side so that we maintain this plus one that will eventually lead to a draw and potentially a victory if we manage to find plus two. Uh, but having sort of helped push back from the brink on this left side 
has allowed us to gain much more ground than I would have otherwise by sort of pushing more aggressively on the right side here. I'm quite lucky that the motorized rifles, um, they miss their piet onto my Panzer IV, and my Panzer IV coming around the corner actually kills off the Firefly. That was very, very important. Meanwhile, on the left side, this Panzer IV, I didn't realize got internal fragmented, so it was just a sitting duck uh, waiting for the Firefly to find the kill. Uh, this Firefly trying to take the kill onto the Wolverine, but uh, being flanked by the Firefly 5C, unfortunately, um, my boy's Firefly finally goes down, but the 232, I think, killed the Wolverine with the um, auto cannon in the side armor. So that was really nice. Women's going to take out the Stuart on the left side, and I'm going to go for the engagement with the Firefly. Forget the track wheel destroy with the uh, first shot. Also going to be slamming this area with the Panzerwerfer to try and pin down any infantry, allow my Panzergrenz an advantage moving through there. But there goes the Firefly. And just a really, really explosive game this was. Tanks going down left, right, and center. Panther G is still trying to make ground on the left side. You can see I turned off the HE and machine gun so that it only engaged armor and didn't reveal um, its armor by facing and attacking uh, infantry. But yeah, managing to hold on to this point was really important for us to maintain a plus one. Because if I ended up getting pushed back here because I was helping on the left side, that would have basically meant my efforts were pointless for the most part. So actually managing to hold on to this area for the time being, whilst continuing to help push back on the left, was vital. Now I've got the verbal in there that's uh, going to be assisting the boy to Cromwell. This boy to Cromwell had really great crossfire throughout this entire period of the game. Like any infantry that just came that little bit too far forwards got smashed by the HE, whilst my um, Tiger and my Panzer Fours kind of held things back otherwise. Now C fire is going to be coming in to engage my ME109 G6R6, but my ME109 doesn't care, takes out the Hellcat, Verbal Vind uh, and the Flak 36 able to help out there. Unfortunately, the Tempest is going to get the better of my ME109 in the end, but those ME109s, uh, they were vital uh, throughout the game in order to make sure that my units uh, were not harassed more than they should have been. So Balax Panther A going to be moving up and continuing the engagements versus the knife guys tanks now for the most part the panthers can get the better of anything the third armored has so we should be safe it's only really the jumbo that can cause issues at close range but due to its lack of accuracy it generally isn't too much of a problem mustang's going to get the better of the focke wolf i believe unless my mobile valve can save the day yeah it looks like they will on this left side. Six pounder goes down, don't have to worry about that anymore. This off map on the right side was scary. This is Minotha with the SSB coming in with that massive rocket barrage. Gonna be trying to surrender my Panzer IV. Thankfully the 232 is not pinned at the moment and thus the M5 half track will be the one to surrender. But all of my infantry has been taken care of so I'm quite reliant now on my tanks which aren't pinned. Look at this off map, it's crazy. Focke Wolf 190 looking for the bombing strikes on the key locations, mainly onto infantry, so the infantry can't just get the better of my positions whilst we continue to make ground on the left. And we're really just trying to go for that plus two so that we can secure the victory as opposed to making it a draw. ME109 G6R6 coming in again for another really nice kill onto the Hellcat. Speed Throat, they go down. I'm going to need more infantry on this right side, but since I'm so far from home, these uh, Panzergrens in the half-track are going to take their time getting to the front line. Panther G has now arrived, so that can help deal with any fireflies quite well indeed. I'm going to be uh, turning off the HE and machine gun on that Panther G once again, so that I purely engage the firefly, because my Panther, I think in that case, was trying to engage the infantry on this far left side which would have been completely useless but uh, the firefly there actually manages to get a straight up frontal kill into my panther g a very very lucky shot actually for the firefly because it's unvetted and the 16 ap just penetrated 
the 14 front armor. It was like so damn lucky. <laughs> but there we go. These things happen and uh, my Panther G after making that long drive gets taken out almost immediately. Panzer IV in the meantime though does manage to pin down the Firefly and help push it back with the Cromwell as well. I do have another aircraft come in but thanks to my Verbalvin being so far up we actually stopped that from bombing altogether. Meanwhile on the left side Panther G still pushing on the main road thanks to um, Balak bringing up the Stern Pioneers with the Flampanzers we are able to take the residential areas and continue this push. Panzergren still alive on this far left side as well. My unit preservation with these Panzer Grenadiers was absolutely key. Like keeping these guys alive to support the Panther was so important. Same deal on the right side. Having my infantry alive for so long was just vital. Panzerwerfer though, that's going to be smashing that infantry on the far left side. P38 Lightning coming in with the bombing strike onto Whitman. He's going to be looking for the kill there. But this Panzer IV doing really, really good work. It's got the two-star veterancy. It can hit things very hard indeed. And currently is doing so. Okay, they're going to be hit by my verbal vind. Didn't quite stop the bombing strike, and so that's going to hit actually really nicely. But these pans, Panzergrens are out of the way for the time being. Uh, meanwhile, moving forwards, the Panzer IV to get into a really awkward situation as Whitman goes down. He does get hit by the 17-pounder on this far left side. Really nice uh, flanking position there for the 17-pounder. But we are still making ground on the left, and uh, I was kind of just hoping that I could get as far as I needed to. I think the motorized rifles ended up killing off my Panther G. That was kind of bad, but we are still making ground, and that's uh, sort of job done for me, helping that little bit of a pushback. I know that I caused a lot of issues for the knife guy. Uh, but the C fire that's going to come in, take out the upper blitz. My half track goes down. My right side, honestly, is really crumbling. Uh, I'm trying to hold on the best I can, but under pressure from like so many people, uh, like the aircraft coming in from Minotha, the tanks coming in from Minotha, the infantry coming in from Minotha, whilst Daniel's still piling in tanks, it was really, really difficult. I was also fighting the knife guy on the left side, um, just continuing to press forwards with the Panzergrens to support Balak. Um, looks like Balak here also getting caught out uh, by this unit. It's actually a bazooka that took it out, not a Piat. Uh, but anyway, ME109 coming into the engagement with the Sea Fires. I'm actually going to lose my Fokker Wolves and the ME109 like at the end of the game here. Just making a desperate attempt to hold on for as long as I can. And I lose the ME109 and that uh, bomber in the process. But that is the end of the game. And it is a draw after the full 40 minutes. Absolutely crazy one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It was absolutely awesome. I do find that when I play with my patrons, because they are um, all really decent at Steel Division, we get some awesome games. And this was no different. Um, managing to push all the way forwards on that right side, then having to support on the left while maintaining my position on the right side with a limited amount of forces that I was not reinforcing was just like really, really fun. But uh, yeah, in the end, 5,342 kills, the 3,320 losses. Very, very nice game indeed. And if we jump over to the kills, well, and this is how you make a Boy to Firefly worth it. Cromwell 7 kills, um, Humbermark 4, Sherman 5, we killed three Stuart 6s, another Sherman 5 there, that's how you use a boy to firefly. This pack 38 on the right side as well, covered the beach really well. I kept the boy to Cromwell alive for a long time, it helped take out a couple of those AT guns, vitally important. Then Whitman came in, he actually did great work, um, he took out the 17 pounder, he took out Harris, he took out uh, Achilles, he took out Firefly. And then we saw the Panzer IV. Those Panzer IVs were also doing really well. Like if a Panzer IV takes out a Firefly, it pays itself off already. The ME109 shooting down two aircraft is a two for one. That's fine. Then the Panther G that came in on the left side absolutely carved up um, the left flank for us, um, pushing the knife guy back. That was like an M4A3 kill, um, M4A1, the M21 and M15, really important units. And Panzergren's taking out the M4A3 there as well. So, yeah, 
It was uh, a very, very awesome game, but mainly came down to the use of my Boy to Firefly and Boy to Cromwell in the early game. That's what allowed me to find as much ground as I did throughout the rest of the game. And um, yeah, very much enjoyed it. In terms of the early game for Daniel, you can see that he did suffer quite badly. Not too many kills uh, coming our way. But then later on when Minotha uh, gets involved, it did cause some issues with that Sherman 2 taking out one of my Panzer IVs. Then of course the Fireflies get involved and due to the abundance of Fireflies, they do get the better of your units that take longer to aim. But it was only really into the major late game that I lost a lot. Um, so that's where the majority of my losses come from. Whereas in the early game, it was just light vehicles for the most part and half tracks. So I was doing really well up until the very end. Either way, really, really fun game. Massive thank you to my patrons for taking part and also for just supporting me on the channel. Um, I don't really say it enough in my videos, um, but yeah, huge, huge thank you to you guys. I really appreciate it. Of course, thank you to all of my subs and viewers as well. But uh, the patrons are the ones who support me monetarily and it really, really helps out. So yeah, thank you guys and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.